Okay, welcome to another AQA Computer Science NEA Enlightenment video. And we're going to look at the third and final section of our analysis. Today, looking at requirements. So let's go back to the mark scheme. You can see that the word requirements fits throughout. And it's easy to just think that requirements are just what we're going to talk about today. Really, you must think about requirements as being the whole process of research and analysis. So what you are find, finding out is what is required to solve the problem. And really all we're doing now is just listing the requirements. So you've hopefully done a load of research, hopefully you've uh, got that nicely documented and you've got lots of formal techniques so you really know the problem now. And that could be a problem that an end user needs solving. Of course, it could be a problem that you're looking to investigate. And what we're trying to do, oops, what we're trying to do today is to make sure that you can fully document this measurable list, that they're really specific, that they will let you know, let somebody who reads it know exactly all the functionality that's required. And we talk about here the needs of the uh, intended user. Uh, Steve Jobs uh, famously said that it's not the job of the user, not the job of the customer, he actually said, to know what they want. It's your job to analyse the problem fully and make sure that you express to your end user what they need to solve the problem. So requirements, what are they? Ultimately, they're just a distillation of everything you've done so far. A list of all the elements that will be to solve that problem. Uh, they tend to get broken down into functional and non-functional. Functional and maybe additional. We need to make sure that you've got all of the input, all the processing, all the storage and all the output requirements in order to solve the problem, in order to make that solution work. Uh, you also need to include anything that isn't essential to actually solve the problem, but is reasonable. So, for instance, uh, the classic one would be security. Uh, if you're storing any data, you've got to make sure that you've got a certain level of security to comply with GDPR. It's not required to solve the problem, but it is required to, uh, for the problem to be both legal and usable. Uh, you could, we'll, we'll talk about what else you can stick in additional later. So all the rest of your analysis and research documents what the user requires, because that's what you found out. And this list is kind of summarizing it, distilling it, listing it. I think this is the most important section of your coursework. Uh, I'm, I'm now going to hopefully tell you why. Having this list genuinely helps you take all of your research and all of your analysis and, and just produce a list that will inform you and guide you about your design and ultimately your technical solution. This is why people do it. This is why people insist on it uh, for commercial software development. Now, it also allows, we'll, we'll, we'll talk in the real world, clients to check against your analysis and make sure that the requirements you think you've put in to solve the problem is what is, is something they can agree with and you'd usually in fact you just in the real world you would have a client sign off uh, on the requirements and ultimately this is kind of what the, the clients agreeing that they will pay for in terms of the coursework it tends to be if i'm honest what i go to first if I'm marking a uh, piece of coursework, I'll flick to the requirements first, then I'll work backwards and look to see if the analysis and research uh, meets that. I mean, I'll, I'll normally have a little look to see just the background and scope of the problem. but um, And then I will sort of look forward to see if ever the rest of the project also matches that. And I'm fairly sure that's what moderators do as well. Because the requirements are considered so important in commercial software development, uh, AQA have really sort of 
sung about it in almost every section or in every section of the, the coursework. So it's referred to in design, it's referred to in the technical solution, it's referred to in testing, and it's referred to evaluation. Ultimately, you test against your requirements, you evaluate against your requirements. Your technical solution has got to meet the requirements. The design has got to be informed and has got to produce a solution that has covered all of the requirements. In fact, if you do a design that doesn't uh, cover all the requirements, you can't get the top bander marks. Same with the technical solution. I want to just quickly recap this, because this is something that um, certainly uh, in the past I felt has been missing. I am happy for the dialogue to be either before or after the requirements. I've pushed it in the last video saying, please summarise your uh, research and analysis in a kind of page that, dis that really sort of discusses what needs to be included. Um, I think the other way of doing it that I've seen quite successful is for you to write afterwards a kind of justification of requirements, where you write a page that kind of goes through and explain why you've uh, created the requirement list you have. I, I think that's acceptable. Whether you've written your dialogue before or your dialogue afterwards, if you read that dialogue, does it lead to the requirement list? If the two don't match, you're in trouble. Something. Something, you, you will lose out somewhere, something is wrong if, if your rationale doesn't match the actual list you've created. Right, let's get down to actually writing these. And I think what we'll do is we'll just have a quick look at a, a few examples first. Uh, right, this was a list given by AQA. It's a, a sort of quizzy system. Um, let me just quickly whiz up to the top so you can see what it is. So it's effectively creating a learning resource quiz. And if we whiz back through, I'm going to be really quick, uh, you can see there's some plenty of research in here. There's some discussions. There's some documents. You can see they've done some nice diagrams. But effectively, it's a, a, a sort of quiz learning system. Now, uh, in the actual marking and moderation, this was thought to be a, a good list of requirements. You can see they've used the phrase objectives. I've, I've got no problem with the phrase objectives. Uh, objectives, requirements, same difference. This was considered to be a good list, but lacking in detail. So they'd felt, OK, this list kind of meets all of the elements required to solve the problem. But there's a little bit of reading between the lines in order to, to work out exactly what's there. So um, create a way for teachers to add outside resources to questions which they would recommend for students to visit. Well, that could be broken down to be more specific. So there's several elements that, OK, you can understand where they're going with it, but it needs to be, it just needs to be broken down to be more specific. Uh, Crucially, I don't know if I mentioned before, this numbered list is absolutely essential. If you don't number it, it will really make your life harder when you are uh, testing and evaluating. So just make sure you've got a numbered list. Uh, my preferred method for numbering is this sort of layered one. And you can look up how to do that in Word or whatever uh, word presses you're using. So this was for a system that analyzes World Bank data. So I don't know if you've uh, looked at the World Bank data. They list shed loads of data, and you can access it in both uh, an API and in CSV files. So I, uh, every year, I'll sort of say this is a reasonable project for students perhaps doing economics or sociology to, to, to have a look at, because it'll be something they'll be interested in. And you can see that uh, the student who wrote this, and this is one of my students, uh, this section got uh, pretty high marks. It was certainly top band. I can't remember the exact mark. They broke it down and broke it down and broke it down. And if you don't know what the World Bank data does, effectively it has it's a list of countries. And for each country is a list of indicators like uh, gross domestic product, uh, average age of leading education, um, 
multi infant mortality rate. Oh, let's go with some more. Uh, average lifespan. You get the idea. And effectively, uh, what the student was trying to do is to perhaps link gross domestic product, how much money the, the country makes, with education levels, with average lifespan. And it, you, so, it's, so the end user, the teacher, could kind of pick any two they liked and see if there was a correlation. And you can see this kind of says. They're shown a list of options for what can be correlated. Um, and it's been broken down. They're allowed to select the countries. They're listed. So you don't need to sort of be specific about what countries are available. Just to sort of say, oh, look, they're only allowed to select two countries. It talks about the particular correlations they're going to use. So Spearman's. And they're talking about the output. So if you look, this student has pretty much gone storage, input, process, output. Why not? Let's have a look at one more example. So this is another student. Um, and this was a piece of software that guided people around uh, the college campus on open evenings. So basically it was like a, um, a web application and people would type in a particular address and then they would get a pictorial uh, view of the college and say, I'm here, I want to go to here, and it would guide them a bit like a sat-nav. I think this could have been a little bit more specific, if I'm honest, but still pretty good. So, you know, which a list of subjects they want to go to, they say which way they want to. It says that, I mean, I, I'm not a big fan of including technical uh, elements to the the requirements but it helped this student because they were trying to work out how they were going to do it they didn't get marked down for it and you can see that there's a, a list of rooms they click on which one they want and then at some stage it sends the directions to the device uh, displays it you don't need to be specific about it being recursive and then they're saying you know it's got to work on uh, a, a mobile browser so there's no point in having images that you're only going to see 10% of it. And they put quite a few additional ones at the bottom here. I'll let you, you, can, you can pause and have a little look through. Again, this was definitely a, a, a top band set of requirements. And it was based on, you know, a reasonable number of techniques and dialogue and research. So you are now in a position where you you want to write your requirements. Let's start with the functional ones. I think to start, I, th I think the, the process of stepwise refinement is really really useful. So start with the top level list. Don't try and get too detailed. Just think, what do I need to absolutely include? So if I'm writing a game, okay, I actually need to create a system that plays the game. What are the essential elements of the, the gameplay. Oh, you know, I need to display the board. I need to um, allow the users to be able to input their moves. And I need those moves to be processed and the board state updated. Uh, I also need to be able to assess whether someone has won or whether something else has happened in the game, like a piece has been taken. And you can just list all of the different parts if you happen to be doing a game. At this stage, you need to Break it down to make sure that, that it, it's unambiguous. And I think the, the phrase is specific. So am I 100% sure that I can't break this down anymore? Do I know how I would know if I've met that um, particular requirement? Now, I think sometimes students do this and do this and they take it a bit too literally and they break it down and break it down and break it down and break it down. It becomes a really horrible, repetitive uh, list. So I think it's fine to recombine. So let's say you're saying, oh, I need to be able to uh, add. Someone needs to be able to add the name of the clients. They need to be able to edit the name of the clients. They need to be able to 
need to delete a client. So feel free to, if it's like just a bit of data processing, um, put, you know, add, edit, delete, update in, in one line. You don't need to sort of separate it all out. Don't forget these elements. So for instance, if it needs to be performed um, within 30 seconds because that's how often the live data gets updated from the data source, then that's that is a performance criteria. Um, if that's something that would affect the functionality, it needs to be put up here. If it's just something because basically the user says, oh, I can't stand slow systems, then that's an additional. Security I've already talked about. If it's a design consideration, like it needs to work for several different screen sizes, uh, again, it, that could be functional, but if it's just because you want it to look nice, it's, it's an additional requirement. The old spec used to insist on something called smart objectives. Now, I, I, I sort of like smart, but I think it can be split into two, really. Can I break it down? Do I know how I know if I've achieved it? Specific and measurable. Achievable, realistic and time bonded is, can I do it? So if you're saying that you want to, so let's say for the last one, last example we looked at, it is a, a system that guides somebody around the college. You know, they, they could have said, oh, the, the route to get from one room to another by the most efficient method will be plugged in and then a drone with a little yellow flag will fly just in front of the um, the the student to guide them from one part of the college to another. That's clearly not realistic. Uh, it might be that they say, oh, I'm going to have um, real-time video on the, on the phone to show them where to go. Again, realistically, you're not going to be able to do that. You've got to, you have got certain limitations. Um, sometimes it's helpful just to remind the, the reader of what those limitations are. But crucially, you've got, what, six months to create this? Uh, realistically and you've only got the skills you've got so realistically you're either going to be creating a desktop application or a sort of client server probably web-based application there's a there's a few a few sort of outliers there but 99% of you that's what you're going to create make sure that your requirements sort of point to that so I really hope that that bit of blurb was useful. Always feel free to ask questions in the comments. If there's something you disagree with or think I've missed, then again, more than happy for you to, to give me some feedback on that. In the very, very near future, the next video design will be up on this channel. All the best. Really hope you're progressing well with your NEA.